Good afternoon everyone, this is Arun Sharma from Microsoft and today we'll be covering suspension bridges. These are the contents of our webinar today. We'll be first uh, talking about different analysis procedures that are there uh, that are required for a suspension bridge analysis. So first we will we'll be talking about completed state analysis which is also called linearized finite displacement method. Then we'll be talking about construction stage analysis which will be backward and will include geometric nonlinearity. Then we'll be going through the uh, overview of the bridge, uh, the suspension bridge that we'll be modeling today and then uh, we'll be talking about the various modeling features we have for suspension bridge and how we can obtain uh, initial cable forces using them. So as I mentioned we'll be talking about the uh, analysis approaches. So the first one is completed state analysis and as you can read from the literature the uh, this is an ex script from uh, our uh, tutorial that is available on our website which you can download for free and uh, it says that completed state analysis is uh, at this stage the structure is in balanced uh, is in balanced condition under uh, self weight and uh, the deflection due to self weight has already occurred this stage is referred to as initial equilibrium state of suspension bridge the initial equilibrium state analysis provides the coordinates and tension forces in the cables. This state is analyzed to check the behavior of the structure under additional loads such as live load, seismic and other wind loadings. So basically uh, when the structure is completed, it's, it's, uh, you can call it as the final construction stage, uh, the structure uh, and before applying additional loads uh, that particular uh, phase of structure is called initial equilibrium state or the completed state of the structure uh, where just the self weight is acting on the structure. So when we do this type of analysis we are able to obtain uh, initial cable forces and the coordinates for the cables. Then we can go on refining it as and when required. On the other hand we have construction stage analysis which is used to perform and see the behavior of uh, structure during the construction stages. So we can check whether the um, uh, structure is stable uh, throughout each and every construction stage. You can choose to do different type of eigenvalue analysis um, and see whether uh, what will be the behavior of the structure during construction stage as well uh, as after construction stage. And the construction uh, stage analysis for suspension bridges, as as you can read from this excerpt here, uh, is the construction stage analysis is performed in backward sequence from the state of equilibrium as defined by the initial equilibrium state analysis. So basically, first we have the completed state uh, uh, state ready with us. We do the analysis. We obtain. Uh, the coordinates and the tension forces for cables and then that is uh, from there we move uh, in the backward direction to the very first uh, stage. Uh, uh, basically it's a deconstruction you can say. So it's a backward construction stage analysis that is the starting point is uh, from the completed stage to the backward. So um, the few keywords uh, that I pointed out on the very first slide were linearized finite displacement method, large displacement or geometric nonlinearity and backward. So I'll be covering what all um, uh, we mean uh, by uh, stating them. So completed state analysis, uh, since uh, as sufficient tension forces are, are induced into the main cable and hanger under the initial equilibrium state loading, it is possible to perform a linearized analysis for the additional static loads by converting the tension forces in the main cable and hangers into increased geometric stiffness of these components. This linearized analytical procedure to convert section forces to geometric stiffness is referred to as linearized finite displacement method. Long story short, you obtain the initial uh, cable forces in uh, cables and hangers uh, due to the initial or the completed state loading and then you converted that uh, 
uh, initial cable forces into increase geometric stiffness of that section and then uh, you just uh, apply additional loads and do the analysis. So this type of uh, procedure is called linearized finite displacement method. All right. Whereas on the other hand, construction stage analysis suspension bridges exhibit significant nonlinear behavior during the construction stages. The effect of large displacement cannot be ignored here. Hence, in carrying out the construction stage analysis, large displacement theory or the geometric nonlinear theory is applied in which equilibrium equations are formulated to represent the deformed shape. So what we do in construction stage analysis is that we don't directly convert our uh, uh, the geometric uh, increase the geometric stiffnesses just from the uh, cable forces. We take into account when a structure uh, is removed in backward construction stage analysis how is the force distribution. So uh, at each and every construction stage or deconstruction stage in this type of analysis is considered as independent from each other and for each stage there exists a set of equilibrium uh, that needs to be maintained uh, for that stage to be stable. So this is what we mean when we say that um, the large displacement theory is applied in which equilibrium equations are formulated to represent the deformed shape. So whatever is the deformed shape that is uh, coming, it is stable or not, it's based on the equilibrium uh, equations that are formulated based on uh, the uh, removing or the redistribution of the uh, forces uh, when a particular segment is removed from the, uh, from the structure in backward construction stage analysis. So uh, I'll be covering uh, these two types of uh, analysis while uh, going through uh, the session today. So now moving on to the overview of the bridge. This is what uh, we'll be modeling and uh, this is how we'll be doing it. So first we'll start by modeling the bridge geometry for which we'll use suspension bridge wizard and through this we'll define geometry sections and the deck weight of the structure then we'll run suspension uh, wizard to uh, generate uh, or to obtain cable forces or the cable coordinates and initial cable forces. So basically uh, at this point of time we just have the dead weight of the deck acting onto the structure for using which the coordinates for the cable that is the uh, catenary cable equation uh, is used and generate and the coordinates for the cables are generated for the geometry. Along with this we also get set of uh, uh, initial forces which are used for small and large displacement analysis which I'll cover later on. Then after this we'll modify the model that is we'll uh, replace the uh, we'll modify the boundary conditions since the uh, deck are initially not rigidly connected but they are pin connected throughout the uh, length and then later on they're rigidly connected we'll model those uh, pin connections We'll also modify the geometry by adding transverse uh, pylon connections and then we'll uh, add some additional loads onto the structure. Um, so basically we are refining the model that we obtained from uh, suspension bridge wizard and then we'll run suspension bridge analysis control for accurate cable forces. So based on these uh, more realistic or uh, site dependent conditions we apply here and then we uh, run a suspension bridge analysis control for accurate or further refining the cable forces that we have obtained. Through this run we get initial forces for large displacement, initial forces for small displacement. I'll cover what is large displacement, small displacement when the time uh, is right, I mean when I move down, move along the webinar. Then uh, since we are uh, uh, first looking at completed state analysis and we don't require any uh, nonlinear behavior so we'll remove the nonlinear and the suspension bridge analysis control data for this linearized analysis and then we'll modify the model for additional loading and boundary conditions as per completed state model and then run the analysis so in the analysis we'll be doing just a linear analysis for small displacement and then I'll be talking about some results on this uh, model. Then we'll move on to define the uh, construction stage analysis model. 
where we'll be defining or modifying the geometry of the uh, bridge by uh, adding construction stages to it for which we'll be defining the uh, structure boundary and load groups and then generating the construction stages since we have already obtained uh, the initial forces for large displacement which are which will be used for construction stage analysis uh, we'll need not uh, go and uh, modify anything else in loading we'll just go ahead and uh, run the construction stage analysis for uh, 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 for backward construction stage analysis and then we'll be talking about some more results now uh, this is how our suspension bridge uh, will look like the geometry is shown here it's a three span bridge where the main span is 400 meter long uh, then the two additional spans are 125 I mean the side spans are 125 meter each so the key component in uh, suspension bridge analysis is uh, determination of initial cable forces and in Midas Civil we have two components as I mentioned one is suspension bridge one is suspension uh, sorry suspension bridge wizard and another is suspension bridge analysis control so suspension bridge uh, uh, wizard can calculate the initial cable forces for self weight or the weight that, that you have defined in the wizard whereas suspension bridge analysis control uh, is something which follows uh, the wizard or you can start uh, from scratch by yourself which uh, will allow you to calculate the initial cable forces for self weight and any other additional superimposed uh, dead loads so i'll be uh, covering upon about uh, uh, the initial forces for geometric stiffness right now so when we will run the analysis uh, or run the uh, suspension bridge wizard we will get initial forces for large displacement initial forces for small displacement these are just uh, uh, based on the given loading and the given geometry and given boundary conditions the program generates these two uh, initial forces now these initial forces are used to represent the initial equilibrium state in construction stages when we talk about large uh, displacement and then these forces are used to uh, uh, modify the geometric stiffness of the section and then uh, use it uh, during the construction stage analysis whereas uh, the small displacement analysis is uh, is the member forces that are uh, in the structure due to the external loads for linear analysis so initial element forces are used to calculate geometric stiffness in general linear analysis so in a nutshell or long story short or in the layman terms uh, the initial forces for large displacement are used for construction stage analysis for or for large displacement analysis which means it is meant for non-linear analysis whereas initial forces for small displacement is meant for linearized finite displacement uh, uh, method and it is used for just linear analysis that is for completed state analysis and that's the end of the story so it's very simple uh, in the suspension bridge uh, 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 wizard or suspension bridge analysis control uh, in Midas Civil to understand these concepts and see them in action so uh, from this point onwards I'll go into the model itself and start the modeling so now I'll uh, start by defining the uh, suspension uh, the geometry based using suspension bridge wizard so I'll go to model go to structure wizard and then I'll go down and select suspension bridge and uh, let me first change the unit systems to ton F, ton force and meters. I'm sticking to uh, these units because they are these are the same units in our uh, tutorials so that when you go back and you want to uh, go through the uh, complete uh, video of this webinar or go through the tutorial yourself you'll not be able to you you will be able to relate to what all we did today so go to model structure wizard and then suspension bridge and uh, then we'll enter the coordinates here for the overall geometry and all these coordinates you can find out uh, as given in the 
uh, bitmap image right here. So you can see what is A, what is A1, what is B, C, D, E and all these uh, uh, variables. A1 being 3.6, 0, 20.72, B being 128.6, 0, and 60.8 and C being that it's a SAC point which is user defined is 328.60 and 27. Since it's a symmetric bridge I'll not be defining D, E and E1 which is on the other side and then I'll enter the height as 60.8 and then I'll go to material I'll click I'll directly import the material for the time being to save some time here so these are the material that we'll be using for cables the moment I uh, click uh, OK you can see the material properties imported and you, as well as you can see it under works tab we'll go to section click import from the same suspension model I'll import the section properties also and you can see all the section properties in this bitmap image right here and if you want to see the material properties you can just double click and see them they are all user defined material properties where we have defined the modulus velocity a poison ratio and the weight density so in Midas uh, um, you can handle concrete, steel, steel reinforced concrete and any user defined material property even wood once uh, we have defined them, then we can assign uh, the uh, or we can match the material properties with the elements here. So we'll have for main cable, cable type of material. Side cable, we'll have cable. Uh, typical hanger, end hanger, we'll all have hanger material properties and deck will have deck and pylon will have pylon material properties. Same thing will go with section. Cable, cable, hanger, hanger deck and pylon. The width of the deck we are uh, defining as 11 and for the unit weight what I'm doing is clicking on advance and defining as point loads on the left side since it's a symmetric it will be uh, uh, copied on the other side And this is on the center span, which will be 31 times 52.9375. And then click OK. So we have defined the, we have not defined the self weight or the unit weight directly. We have just defined point loads at all the anchor locations here. And now we'll define the shape of the deck. Uh, you can consider the slope. You, if it's asymmetric, then you can have left and right slope. Uh, right now, I'll just have same uh, same slope on both sides, and the arc length will be 650. Once we have entered this, then we can enter the hanger distance on the left and the center. So it will be 10 at 12.5 meters and the other one will be 32 at 12.5 meters. You can uh, click on drawing and see the preview of how the model will look like and if you want to reuse these uh, values or similar wizards, uh, similar uh, settings, you can always save them as some name and then later on you can just click on them and click uh, open to bring back these uh, settings. Then you can click OK here and the program will ask you the moment you click OK the program is about to execute the suspension bridge wizard and therefore it asks you to first save this file with some name so I'll just say suspension bridge SP and then click save here and now the program will run the analysis and generate uh, 
the geometry. So if you noticed, we just defined the top of the pylon, the points A and A1 here, the height of the pylon, and the sag point. We didn't we uh, we uh, did not define the coordinates for this cable or the side cables. So based on the loads that we define in the height, the program automatically computed these with the initial forces. So as you can see here, the initial forces are generated uh, based on this uh, based on the wizard settings as we have entered. Now you can go ahead and modify them as I uh, mentioned previously. So what I'll do is switch to a wireframe right now and first because it's a curved uh, deck so I'll move the pylon uh, nodes to merge at that location. I'll just single select them. Right click go to nodes and then translate. I don't know what is the height here so I'll click on move and in this green field I'll just click on the node from where I want to go to other location. Let me click on the node right above it and I just want to raise it in the Z plane so I'll uh, enter 0 comma 0 comma the height here and then check on intersect frame elements and click apply and then the node will move up and now I want to divide my pylon into number of pieces so that I can connect them in the transverse direction I'll right click go to elements divide and then I'll divide into unequal distances starting from top as 1.75 sorry 1.25 comma 18.75 click apply so having done this I can switch to ISO view here zoom in so you can see the element divided now I'll right click go to elements and create element where I'll select the material as pylon and the section is uh, pylon trans which is which means transverse and I'll just click on the node and then go all the way across it like this to create three connections there similarly I'll do it here on the other pylon and I don't want the topmost connection to be there so I'll just click on them and hit delete from the keyboard so uh, basically I'm quickly modifying the geometry as per my requirements now I'll go ahead and modify the boundary conditions For this uh, and uh, just for your information you can see that there are 49 rigid links so if I zoom in at this location you can see the hangers are there and then the girder is in the center and they are connected through rigid links where the girder, uh, girder node is master and the other two nodes at the two uh, ends of the or the anchors for the hangers are uh, the slaves to that node. Now I'll undisplay them again and now I'll apply support at the, and you can also see uh, uh, the program has already generated some supports so you can right click and display them on the screen so the uh, cable anchors are uh, there it's an earth anchored uh, suspension bridge there is uh, anchorage at the I mean the there are supports at the base of the pylon but the decks uh, are at the two at the two ends need to be supported so I'll just select the two extremes here then right click go to boundaries support and then I'll fix all the uh, D uh, degrees of freedom that means DX DY DZ with three displacement degrees of freedom and two rotational degrees of freedom that is RY and RZ so it is basically allowing the rotation about uh, the uh, uh, Y axis so RY is allowed at these nodes and then I'll click apply 
Now I'll go ahead and uh, as I mentioned uh, before uh, the uh, bridge is uh, before the deck is rigidly connected to the uh, to the uh, hangers or to the structure they are uh, kind of suspended from the top so basically the excuse me let me bring a, an image onto the screen so that will help you understand this better So basically we are trying to simulate this behavior. The deck is suspended by the hangers only. The sag point is there. So we want to simulate this behavior. So as you can see there will be no transfer of moment between the uh, deck locations. I mean the deck connections. So we'll go for a uh, uh, pin connection at all the nodes on the along this girder. And we are doing this to, uh, to get refined geometry and initial forces uh, in cables. Initial forces and cables using the suspension bridge analysis control, which I'll be using very shortly and from shortly from now. So, for this, uh, I'll just enter the element number that I want to use. Uh, so, to start with, I'll start with the girder that is uh, connected to the pylon. I'll right click, go to boundaries and in the boundaries I'll select beam and release and here I'll select um, I want to release the moment on both ends for now so MY and M, uh, MY at I and J are released and I also want to uh, since it's a kind of roller support at uh, the um, at the pylon connection so I'll also release the FX at the Jth node for these two elements and then click apply and then I'll repeat the same thing for the deck connected to the other side of the pylon so I'll select them and fx at ith end of this uh, element will be released so I'll just click apply here that's it and now I'll select all the uh, girders and go and uh, modify their um, move up, apply a base, apply a pin release uh, on their I and J and as and when required. So I'll uh, directly go to select element by identifying or by numbers. So I'll enter the element numbers, which is uh, 204 to 211 and 230 to 243. hit enter so you can directly see all the members that I want to select have been selected here. Uh, I'll define a boundary group which I'll use later on by the name pin connection. Click add here, click close and then select and assign all these pin connections under this heading. So I'll remove, uh, I'll just apply the bending moment uh, by release at the ith end of these members. Click apply and then I'll select uh, the other side it will be 214 to 228 and 246 to 253 and then hit enter you can see the other uh, side of the uh, girders or the other side uh, of the span is selected this uh, for this uh, span will release the bending moment at the jth node of the elements and click apply I'll not uh, dwell uh, deep into uh, the beam and releases here and why I and J. Um, all these uh, are quite uh, small but important details and are given in the tutorial. So I'll encourage you to definitely go through the tutorials because if I cover everything here, uh, this session will be never concluded. So uh, having defined these uh, releases, we'll uh, now go ahead and create two structure groups. So I'll go to group tab, right click, go to new with three dots, enter the name as nodes to be updated.
click add and the other group will be sag points and then click add and now all the nodes that need to be updated uh, after uh, upon running of uh, suspension bridge analysis control under uh, the revised uh, boundary conditions uh, we need to assign them right here so I'll go to nodes uh, uh, by entering select nodes by numbers so I'll enter the uh, node data right here 4252 112 114 to 144 and 146 to 154 when I hit enter you can see all the nodes except the pilot uh, ones are selected along the cable then I'll just click on the nodes to be updated uh, group drag it over the screen and drop it in this manner you can see 98 nodes are selected now I'll go ahead and define the uh, uh, nodes to this group which is SAC points which is basically the uh, the two nodes on the main cable at the SAC point which will be 27 and 129 and you can see the nodes right there I'll drag and drop it over the screen the SAC points now we'll uh, go to uh, loads, static load cases and we have uh, as you can see the program has already defined a self weight for us so we'll go to loads and select self weight and let me put this self weight into a structure group or oh, sorry a load group which I'll use later on so let the name be self weight click add and close Basically, this uh, self weight uh, load group is required for suspension bridge analysis control also. So, I'll select the load group here and modify my existing self weight, which is right now under default group. So, I'll click on self weight and then click modify. So, you can see the group is modified right here. And now I'll add some additional load onto the uh, nodes. So, I'll right click, go to load and under load I'll select nodal loads the load case and the load group remaining self fade I'll add minus 26.469 if you remember it is the this is the um, this is half of the value that we entered in the suspension bridge uh, wizard so I'll go to wizard here and if I go to advanced you can see 52.975 and half is 26 point something, something which uh, we are entering now basically this load was applied directly to the to the deck to get the geometry but now we are applying the load to the uh, appropriate anchor location so we are dividing it into half because uh, there are two anchors per hanger so one here one on the other side so therefore now I'll select the nodes on which I want to uh, apply this loading and uh, that will be 54 to 102 and 156 to 204 so you can see all the anchor points are selected in fact, you can go in, uh, zoom in and select all of them uh, or there are several other ways of selecting this. I'm just using uh, this number approach so that I need not move my model several times as we are going through uh, some network uh, issues or the lag between the transmission and reception. Then you can click apply here and you can see the loading being applied. Now we can close this, go to analysis and select suspension bridge and as control data but before that let me switch to the works tab so that you can uh, notice the difference here. So going to analysis, suspension bridge and as control data, number of iterations is 10, uh, nodes to be updated, I'll select it the uh, structure group as nodes to be updated, then SAC point group, I'll select SAP, SAC point and here uh, there are some other refinements that uh, that are possible uh, for suspension bridge analysis control to take uh, into account. It can be 
a constant horizontal force of cable which you can use to apply onto the pylon if needed. Uh, then further more refinement can be done for hanger bottom point uh, Z displacement conditions. So you can select the, um, I mean they're, they're, these are basically different constraints and settings that are uh, field specific or your model specific and you can go ahead and modify them. And more detailed literature is available in the tutorial or and on our website. So feel free to uh, browse uh, those pages there. Now here uh, I'll stick to some uh, simple straightforward approach for the timing. So load case being self aid factor being 1 and I'll click add. So based for this uh, load case that includes the self aid as well as the point load that we just applied, the program will modify uh, or run, do the iterations and update uh, the nodes that need to be updated uh, keeping the SAC points as same because these are fixed. They are user defined, they will not be modified and everything else will revolve around them. And in order to do this, the program will calculate what is the additional forces required in the cable or relaxation required in the cable. So basically, what all uh, initial forces for geometry stiffness you have obtained here will be revised and uh, will be filtered or made more accurate. Same thing for initial element forces for small displacement. I'll click OK. and you can see here the uh, iterations are done. And now we can now move on with the modeling and uh, oh, my bad, sorry. Uh, we need to perform the analysis. That's why I was thinking it's just point four one seconds from the previous one. So therefore, I'll click on perform analysis, and now the program will update and do the iterations. So it took two point two five seconds, and now you can see that initial forces for geometric stiffness are updated, and the program has calculated equilibrium element nodal force uh, for. Uh, the corresponding structure. Now these uh, equilibrium element nodal forces are used when we do the backward construction stage analysis. When a certain uh, a set of elements are removed, uh, how the load is to be redistributed so that there are no uh, significant deformations or instability in the structure. So and uh, uh, the initial force for geometric stiffness as we all know this will be used to uh, modify the uh, geometric stiffness of the sections in order to carry out the geometric nonlinearity and the small displacement uh, initial forces for small displacement are meant for completed state analysis uh, which is nonlinear or oh, sorry which is a linear analysis now uh, once this analysis is completed now we can move on uh, to modify the uh, geometry for linearized analysis and we don't need the nonlinear analysis, so we'll just remove nonlinear analysis. We don't need suspension bridge analysis, so we'll remove suspension bridge analysis. Uh, I mean the controlling data. And now, with no such control, it is just a linear analysis model. So, for linear analysis model, it will not use or ignore all the large displacement uh, values that are there. And while uh, and just the uh, initial forces for small displacement will be used. If you want to see their values you can right click go to table and the program will show you all the values that are calculated based on the geometry and the loading that are specified for trusses and beam elements. So uh, now the final touches is I want to um, get uh, as let me bring back that image now since this uh, kind of setting or the boundary condition was needed to uh, assess the geometry and the initial forces for uh, updating the cable forces but in real uh, completed state analysis this complete uh, uh, deck is rigidly connected to the uh, structure. So what we'll do is we'll delete all the pin connections that we just created. And we'll uh, 
do that in this manner so we know the first type 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and so that means at ith end uh, at ith node my is released so I don't want this set of links so I'll delete them and uh, not the link sorry the beam and releases and then I'll delete the other one also and I'll modify the type 1 and type 2 now so I'll go right click go to properties I'll check off the release at ith end click apply and the moment I do that if I go to the elevation and if you try to look closely this these two are modified here now you can see just one circle otherwise there were two circles at i and j end I close this and then I'll go to the other one right click go to property and just check off at j at the end and then click apply so now you can see the now since uh, we have a roller condition at the connections uh, or the bearing is there which, which will allow the movement of deck over uh, the pylon uh, transverse connection so we have applied this kind of uh, beam and release and uh, now since the main cable is connected to the deck rigidly we need we will apply a stay uh, link element so what we'll do is go to boundaries and select an elastic link and here we'll enter the stiffness along the x-axis that is uh, which is the global x-axis but local uh, z-direction as 1 10 to the power 11 and I'll just rotate it to a side and I'll create the link once and it will be copied to the other location so the width of the deck is 11 so I'll select y-axis and 11 meters and the nodes I'll just go to the appropriate node uh, which is uh, which happens to be node number 27 and 78 so this is the sac point here so I'll click on 27 and then click on 28 and you can see if I zoom in at this location you can see the x-axis is vertical, y is perpendicular and z axis is along the global x-axis. So the stiffness along global x-axis for this link element has been increased uh, significantly so that this will this link will compensate for the movement of the deck and they keep the cables intact with the deck at this location. So having done this now we can uh, apply some additional loads onto the structure let's say I mean this model as such is our final completed state model now if you want to see the effect of some vehicles on the structure we can apply do the live load analysis you can just apply some other kind of wind load analysis seismic analysis whatever you want to do your bridge is now suspension bridge is now ready to take care of all the uh, static loads uh, for final state analysis because we have already applied sufficient uh, uh, cable forces to take in, uh, to take care of all the other static load analysis uh, so uh, just to give some brief example let me enter some load cases here user define type load case 1 click add 2 add 3 add so I'll define 3 load cases basically what I'll do is apply uh, point loads at different locations which will represent either the vehicle or uh, pedestrian load but the magnitude is high enough it's 46 uh, turn 4 so this is equivalent to comparable to a vehicle excuse me so what I'll do is right click go to loads nodal loads and here select load case 1 LC1 uh, FC will be minus 46 the loading will be applied at the uh, right at the uh, deck uh, or the girder under the sag point then uh, I'll change the load case to LC2 value remaining same and that should be applied at uh, some distance let's say 223 right here then I'll change it to LC3 
and the value remains same and let us apply on some nowhere here so that will be node number 210 and then click apply so we have applied three point loads at different location and now we are all set to run the analysis on this model and you can see in the message window the analysis is being performed it just took about one second to complete this uh, simple analysis and now I'll quickly show you some deformation results so right click go to deformation uh, deform shape uh, under cell fate you can click undeform legend click apply so this is the I don't know if you can see on your screens clearly there is a faint line at the uh, the backdrop which shows the undeformed shape and this is showing the deformed shape but if you see the magnitude it's uh, quite less so this is a exaggerated image so you can control the scale factor let's say 0.2 times click apply so now you can see more realistic deformation and then you can see due to cell load case 1 how much is the deformation load case 2 how much is the deformation and so on and so forth and then this is load case 3 and the load is right here I can choose to display the nodal loads so whenever I'm seeing this is load case 3 load case 1, load case 2 and all these values can be extracted in tabular format in no time right here and let's also review the cable forces which will fall under the category of truss forces let's say load case 1 click apply so you can see the cable forces right here and if you want to see them in tabular format you can select that load case and just uh, select the cables and you can see the values now point to be noted here is the cable uh, cables already have initial forces in them which is due to uh, the cell fate of the structure or the cell fate group that we uh, the load case that we added so all the values that you are seeing here are over and above that initial value so this is the additional forces that are there so if you want to see the summation of the two or take into account um, uh, this uh, cable force also while computing or uh, modifying the geometric stiffness what you can do is you can just go to load go to initial forces for small displacement and then there exists initial force control data you click on this you can just simply say add initial force to the element force and then select load case 1 and then just click OK and then you can go ahead and perform uh, the analysis again and then you will get the modified values so this completes our uh, completed state analysis and now I'll move on to the construction stage analysis model if you have any questions uh, till this point you may ask really quick otherwise I'll move on uh, with the uh, second part of this session which will approximately take 25 to 30 minutes from now alright so uh, hold on to your questions I'll proceed from, from this point and directly move on to uh, define construction stages so let me save this file with the name as let's say construction stage CS so we have all the loadings right here uh, let me undisplay the loadings we have all the uh, initial forces already set up so this time it, it was just the initial forces for small uh, displacement that were reused next time uh, or uh, in construction stages the large displacement values will be used so for this um, all we need to do is just go to let's first start by defining uh, structure groups go to groups right click or I 
think I should take this towards the end because it will take time. So uh, let's do uh, other stuff first. Let us generate construction stages. So I'll click on that icon to, uh, that says define construction stages. Then click generate. Enter the name as CS for construction stages. Suffix can be 0, comma 2 to or say 0 to 7. I want to have 7 or 8 construction stages. So 0 to 7 construction stages then click on save result for stages and then click OK so you see 8 construction stages generated and then we'll go on manipulating them uh, uh, from little while from now and then click close other things we need, uh, we need to do before this uh, is go to loads go to static load cases delete uh, the user defined load cases that we were uh, dealing with Modify the self rate with CS, that is the construction stage loads, because you want to see its effect during the construction stage. Click modify, and now we'll define the groups. So right click, go to group with three uh, new with three dots, and enter the name as S underscore G, that is structure group, and suffix will be zero two to seven. I'm doing this on purpose. I want one. Uh, uh, I don't want to have a structure group one because uh, these suffix. Now here's a tip for you. These suffix are same as construction stages, so it will be easier for me to remember that which group needs to be activated in which construction stage. So I don't want to activate or deactivate anything in CS one. Therefore, I didn't create a structure group by that suffix. I click close here. And for the very first stage, since it's a deconstructing uh, uh, construction or backward construction stage, so what I'll do, uh, let me bring back the model file. And so this is what uh, the construction stage, or this is how the construction stage will look like. It'll have the completed model. Then we'll start uh, by applying pin connections for the deck again because. Uh, this is what the final model looks like or either way I should uh, let me explain you in this direction so first we'll have the pylons and the uh, cables uh, with the sag there then we'll start construction from the uh, sag points and then move towards the uh, uh, two ends of the pylon then the entire span is created and then we'll move uh, from the two extreme ends and start adding deck uh, under these side cables and once uh, the side cables are uh, connected I mean the deck is completed it is uh, still uh, flexible and not rigidly connected to the uh, uh, with the adjacent members so once the entire uh, bridge is stabilized then we'll and uh, uh, is uh, completed we'll make them rigid so that's the real role of uh, pin connection right here and we'll also add the stay member in the final or the completed state which will not be there in the following construction sequences so this will uh, how, this is how our construction schedule looks like first stage we'll activate the complete structure we'll activate all the boundaries and the stay conditions and we'll activate uh, the self aid load group that we have defined the next construction stage we'll not activate or deactivate any structure group We'll just take out the. Uh, we'll just activate the pin connections. That is to make the uh, deck not connected rigidly, or we're having pin connections, and we'll deactivate the stay boundary conditions. And then we'll go on deactivating. As you can see here, it's under deactivate tab. Deactivating SG2, SG3, SG4, SG5, SG6, and 7, and so and so forth. So uh, let me show you how uh, we can define the uh, structure groups. To start with so let me zoom in at this point I'll just use single select and select the members that form my structure group to or first of all let me define the complete structure uh, group so let me select select all and then click on SG0 drag it over the screen and drop it so this is our final state model which is under SG0 and now I'll select the members that are following in other structure groups then click on SG2 
drag it to the screen and drop it and then uh, in order to make the selection more visible I can right click and click inactive so now you cannot see them on the screen then you can go ahead and select uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hangers here and similarly um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hangers here and then put them under third uh, SG3 group and then right click and select inactive so in this manner you can go and define go on defining the members so what I'll do is uh, open a file where I've completed this uh, repetitive steps and that will be this model so if I come to the structure group oops not this one uh, CS1 I guess yeah anyways let me quickly modify this <coughs> excuse me so here you can see um, if I just double click on the structure groups they are uh, they are put under different uh, different structure groups the members are assigned and then we have made a structure group for pin connection members so that we can identify which members uh, are to be uh, supposed to have pin connections and we have already defined the pin connections from the previous just uh, we did in the previous uh, stage I mean previous model file for completed state analysis let me just right click and display so you can see green circles that uh, uh, go to show that the pin connections have been defined and they have been put under uh, this pin connection boundary group. How to define boundary group? It's very simple. You just right click, go to new with three dots, enter the name and then click add. We have also defined two boundary groups which is BG and stay. And now we'll what we'll do is define uh, all the other boundary conditions to this uh, boundary group BG. So what I'll do is select everything. And select everything, select all and then click on BG and drag it over the screen and drop it. And now I can specify what all things I want it to have. Uh, this boundary group so it will I'll just right click click OK I'll select all the boundaries that are there and put them under BG group and now uh, I'll select everything and then drop the stay uh, boundary group and then I'll specify I just want to select the elastic link that I've defined under this uh, boundary group so I leave elastic link checked on and then click OK. So now if I double click you can see that these nodes are selected which will have the stay um, uh, uh, element defined. If I double click you'll see the boundary group will have all the other uh, uh, boundary conditions defined. But if you recall it is supposed to have uh, all the boundary conditions except pin connections. So what I'll do is unselect everything. Just select the pin uh, connection structure group and then click on pin connection and drop it to the screen and check off everything else but B min releases and then click apply or OK. So now if I double click you can see that uh, these boundary conditions have been assigned. These are the boundary conditions in BG uh, group and then this is the boundary condition in the stay group. So this is how you can define uh, boundary groups in no time. Having uh, done this, we'll go ahead and uh, define the construction schedule. So, what I'll do is let me just delete this and recreate it because I realize this model file already has uh, the construction schedule defined. So, I'll delete them, then I click generate CS0. Two seven, 
check on save result and then click OK here and now I'll go on modify each and every construction stage so this, this is the first construction stage where the complete model is activated so I'll just click on SG0 group uh, this is the activation box, this is the deactivation box I'll keep it under activation box then I'll move on to the boundary tab and click on BG that is the boundary conditions, all the other boundary conditions and stay boundary condition and click under uh, under activation on add then I'll move on to the load tab and click on self aid and click add then I'll click apply so that this uh, in this manner I've defined construction stage 0 I'll move on to construction stage 1 now until and unless you deactivate anything everything is carried forward from previous construction stage to the following construction stage so this means if you don't see uh, self aid under activation tab this means um, but you activate it in the previous construction stage it will automatically be carried forward to the subsequent construction stage same goes with boundary and same with the elements now I'll click on uh, in this uh, uh, construction stage you'll see pin connection being activated stay being deactivated so I'll go to boundaries click on pin click add it's being activated and stay will be deactivated so I'll go under deactivation tab and click add and then apply having done this I'll change the construction stage to CS2 and go to element tab click on SG2 click add sorry my mistake SG2 is uh, the structure group that is being taken out so it will go under deactivation tab then click apply and also while deactivating any member MySQL gives you the flexibility to consider the element force redistribution if you don't want to uh, redistribute the entire force that was supported by this member you can choose any number less than 100 for that 100 means the complete force is redistributed to the neighboring or the adjacent members then you click apply then you can change to CS3 structure group 3 under deactivation tab add apply fourth stage uh, SG4 deactivate apply fifth fifth uh, uh, SG5 sixth construction stage sixth SG group under deactivation apply and seventh under seventh and then click apply and then you can close this and close this as well now once we have done this uh, you can cycle through the construction stages and see for yourself whether how the construction stages are laid down so I'll go to the uh, and before this let me also go to display and select all the nodal loads to be displayed go to boundary tab and all the boundaries to be displayed uh, which includes all the elastic link and the beam and releases and the support and then click OK so you can see all the things are displayed on the screen now I'll change the construction stage to CS0 which is the final state and you'll see that only the uh, deck to pylon connection is uh, roller there which will allow the movement as well as the uh, I mean the beam and releases are there to simulate that and we have the stay member there so let me zoom in at this location you can see the yellow color thing is the stay uh, member right there so this is the final state model or the completed state model then we come to the first construction stage and then uh, you see the uh, all the uh, deck uh, individual members are pin connection then second stage uh, CS2 will be this member is taken out third will be in the backward order and this will be the seventh construction stage so this is how uh, we define the construction stages now we can go ahead and define the construction stage analysis control so you go to analysis construction stage analysis control and here we you uh, make sure we checked on initial include nonlinear analysis under a nonlinear analysis you can specify displacement norm and other uh, 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 nonlinear analysis control criteria and then you can choose whether you want to have each state 
uh, analyzed as independent or accumulated by independent uh, as the name says each stage uh, has no relation with the following construction stages it will be uh, analyzed independent from each other if you choose accumulated then the effect are accumulated together as we move uh, on since it's a backward construction stage analysis uh, it is the independent stage that we follow and make sure to check on include equilibrium element nodal forces because when we'll be removing members the program will apply equal uh, and opposite external forces uh, which will be developed internally uh, by the program in the members uh, so that the structure is stable and these forces have been automatically obtained by the program due, uh, with the help or with the aid of uh, suspension bridge analysis control data and make sure you are in the base construction stage when you are changing because I got an error message which is now removed here so I'll go to analysis and construction stage analysis control data and then click OK. And if you come to box tab, you can see the analysis control data right there. And now we are good to perform the analysis. But uh, while the analysis is being performed, let me open another model file which will have the completed state analysis. Okay, I'll rerun the analysis for this file as well. And you can see under the message window, the analysis is being performed. And the analysis take about uh, roughly four seconds for this uh, backward construction stage nonlinear analysis. So you can appreciate the speed of the engine. I agree the, uh, the analysis was relatively simpler as compared to the real structures because there you can have a time dependent effect if you want for uh, uh, for uh, different type of uh, components of the structure. You can have other sets of loadings. It can be made more realistic, but certainly this uh, is a definite time saver when it comes to generating the or uh, obtaining the initial forces for large displacement, small displacement analysis. It uh, definitely saves a good amount of time. Now we'll move to construction stage 7 here and let me switch to the uh, side uh, or the elevation view. Right click, go to deform shape, summation loading, and then click on deform shape, legend, and click apply. And here you can see this is the normal shape, and the program uh, and the cable have gone all the way up. But if you see the value, it is just uh, like uh, it's fairly less. So, what I can do is uh, reduce the scale to make it more realistic so this is the dark line shows the deformed shape of the uh, cantilever or sorry the uh, catenary and the uh, gray line which is in the backdrop shows the undeformed shape now if you want to see how the sag or the sag points uh, uh, are deformed during the construction stages you can go to result stage stage step history graph and then you can select displacement and click add new function enter the name as sag the node number being the uh, obviously the sag point node so that will be 27 and the component being dz and then click ok then uh, all the other things are more is multifunction last step of every stage and step stage graph you want to see. You can see this uh, result against time as well but uh, here we'll have st uh, stage step. Check on the function name enter the graph title as SAG and then click graph and if you see this graph is created so this is the last construction stage I mean this is the first construction stage or the completed uh, state and the direction of uh, backward construction stage is this way so if you uh, if you want to interpret from beginning of the construction stage so this will be the uh, deformation uh, uh, at the sag and then when you start constructing it will move in this direction and then finally it will meet absolutely zero deformation 
So this is what we plan for and the program gives you the uh, amount of deflection you can expect uh, uh, during this construction of this bridge. Then uh, this was the SAG graph that is generated by the program. Then similarly we can see on the same construction stage the deformation. For suspension bridges uh, there is something called set back. If you are not familiar with this term you can go through our tutorials for more information or search uh, internet. Uh, set back is a kind of horizontal camber that is uh, provided for the uh, pylons. Basically if uh, the pylon, uh, I mean the uh, construction is started with vertical, absolutely vertical pylon and the length of uh, the uh, main cable being the uh, final length of the uh, completed state then uh, as and when you start construction you will see that the pylon uh, will bend inside and there will be uh, cable slip occurring over the pylon. So in order to avoid uh, that ki this kind of uh, pylon slip and in order to avoid any unbalanced uh, 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 bending movement coming into the pylon, what uh, construction engineers do or the construction practice says is we apply uh, some uh, uh, wires or uh, and pull the pylon back uh, while it is in the initial stages of construction. So basically we, ap uh, we apply a force deformation in the other direction so that once uh, the entire bridge is completed it comes back to the vertical position. So this uh, 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 horizontal camber is called setback and you can assess how much setback is required uh, uh, through this kind of analysis. You can go to undeformed shape and then uh, click on legend and select DX component because it's horizontal. So here you can see that this is the uh, deformation that is occurring in the X direction and the pylons are deformed this much. So uh, uh, you need to apply uh, a horizontal camber of, the, uh, of equal to uh, this value as given by the program uh, by pulling them uh, from using some additional ropes or cables from behind and when the structure will start forming from the center towards the outer, outer uh, ends the pylon will become vertical because the length of the cable is uh, fixed and there is no slipping occurring on top. So uh, you can generate, uh, you can have a better visualization of this if you go to uh, stage step history graph and here you can click add a function, enter the name as uh, right tower, basically you can enter any name you want and the node value, uh, node number will be at the top of that tower, let's say uh, 43 and the component will be DX, click OK here and others being as set as default, I'll click on tower, I'll enter the name as set back graph, click graph and this is what the program generates. So at the beginning of construction stage, uh, I mean uh, Again, the back, it is the backward construction state direction is from the left side towards the right side. So this is the final state and this will be the initial state. So this is uh, this much from the zero level that, uh, that the camber should be provided for the vertical uh, pylon and this is how the deformation will occur and then it will converge and uh, by the end of the construction you will get perfectly aligned absolute zero value and straight pylon as desired. So the program is able to predict all uh, these variations that is very useful while you are going ahead with the construction of uh, suspension bridge. Now let's see some more uh, of the results. Let's go to a different construction stage, right click, let's see member forces, you go to beam forces and moments, click moment and then click legend and click apply. Sorry, let's go to diagrams. MY solid fill apply. So you'll see that there is absolutely no bending moment coming into the deck as we desire, and there will be some unbalanced uh, bending moment in the pylons as shown here. 
and this is the final completed state so you can see the uh, behavior of the structure right here so as desired uh, while we are uh, doing the suspension bridge the deck should not get any bending movement we are able to achieve that uh, configuration you can see the cable forces by switching to truss forces here and click apply and they are given right here and uh, you can plot using the step stage graph again all the variations that are occurring in the uh, uh, in the pylon and the cables so what I'll do is and you can plot multiple graphs so let's try that I'll change the uh, function type to truss forces click add uh, new function uh, new function and the name will be cable force the element will be let's say this element oh there, there's an overlapping let's say yeah let's say 143 just making sure that it's a cable element uh, force and ith end click OK and let's have a beam force function for right tar or tar actual force maybe that would be a better name and the component will be actual at ith end and force then click OK oh sorry my bad I didn't enter the uh, element number tar actual force let's take this element Sixty one, let me see. So this is the element that we are uh, looking at and I at end of it and actual force click OK and now uh, I can just select multiple graphs to be plotted on uh, the same uh, uh, stage step x axis. I mean against this uh, x axis and the name can be cable and tar force click graph and this is what you'll get so you'll get two graphs against uh, the construction uh, stages step the red one representing the cable force and green one representing tower actual force and again it is uh, the last stage is right here so uh, it is the backward direction so basically this is uh, the initial stage this is the final state so you can see how the cable actual force is developing and how the actual force in the uh, in the column or the pylon is developing. So all these uh, graphs and uh, tables can be easily extracted and generated in your report and in no time you can uh, come up with uh, the complete uh, model and the, uh, and the design results for uh, such suspension bridges. So that was all I wish to cover today and I'm just in time. It's 4.30 p.m. in my office uh, in New York. So I, uh, as mentioned, it was one and a half hour session and we are able to meet that timeline. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me now. So you can write to me at asharma at mydesuser.com. Please ignore my phone number for the timing because, uh, or let me give you my other phone number because this uh, line will, uh, this number is soon to change. So my new number, uh, my current number is 646-703-2794. You can reach me at this number. This is my personal number, but anyways, uh, till the time I have something uh, to share with you, you can definitely use this number. So uh, Stanley here is asking what's the website to down for the downloading uh, for downloading the tutorial. It is en.midasuser.com.
Mm, let me write that down here. It is e n dot minus user dot com. E is small here. So if you go to this website, it'll look something like this. <laughs> 